Hello YouTube, this is Dustmite, and today is going to be a tutorial on how to set up Blender for video editing. Now the first thing we're going to start out with is um, the general plane for Blender. What we have to do is remove this because we're not going to be doing 3D, um, we're not going to be doing any 3D modeling today. So we're going to get rid of that and we're going to move over here to the side pane. Um, we're gonna, we can ignore the render um, for now actually and we can look more so at the dimensions and make sure that everything here is good. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to notice is that, or I want to pay attention to, is that um, the, res the, the resolution is in 1080p, but it will only render at um, 50%. What that means is that, um, that you can edit the video and you can render it faster because it'll only be half the size of it, uh, of it normally but you will have to remember to set that up to 100 when you're done editing it. Now, um, checking my stream here. Um, now what we're going to do is check the frame rate. The frame rate um, it actually is very important in Blender because Blender is an animation software more so than a video editor, though it can be used for it. Um, what you want to do if you have footage that you already want to edit, that you already have, you're probably going to want to set to 30 or 60 because um, if you input a 30 frames per second video into Blender and have this frame rate set to 24 then the audio will desynchronize so you want to make sure that that matches the frame rate of your video however if you're animating generally your animations will be at 24 frames per second or 12 frames per second if you're doing more advanced animation and with 12 frames per second, um, it's very easy to use um, 24, obviously, to, um, to fill that in, do the math, basically. Um, Anti-aliasing is a post-processing effect that you can do on your video. This, um, this will basically smooth out any sharpness in your video. Um, again, you're probably going to want to set that off for um, editing. And if you have video that looks fine already and you don't want to have to... Re deal with a bunch of um, after compression. Don't turn that on. But if you're an animator that uses um, solid um, bitmaps instead of like vector art or something, which I do not believe you can actually edit or actually edit in this software as um, as vectors, but rather as the video you render out of that pro out of Flash or whatever. Um, but um, if you're using bitmaps for frame by frame editing, um, you're probably going to have jagged edges. So you're probably going to want that turned on. Just really depends on the quality of your video. Um, sampled motion blur. Again, same thing with anti-aliasing, except this is motion blur. So if you want to add that in, you can, um, you can add that in. Um, shading, that's generally meant for the 3D things. But I'm, I'm not quite confident that, we'll, that it will render the video without some of these. Um, the explanation for that is a little bit convoluted, but... Um, but I'm not 100% certain on that anyway, so rather than experiment with it, just leave it be. Um, performance, it seems fine to me. I don't really see any reason to um, edit any of this for video editing purposes. Post-processing, same thing. Stamp, nothing. Outline, out, or output. Output's important. Now, if you set this to just your regular, um, if you, let's go back here for a second, whoops cancel if you look at um if you look at where this is going it's just going straight to your temp folder now if you've rendered already and you don't want to have to re-render it where that is on windows at least is right here just go to my computer and then local your local disk your your main basically your main hard drive um in linux i believe it is in the just general file system you'll see like a temp folder it, I think it renders there. I'm not 100% certain, though. Um, I have not used Blender too much on Linux. And Mac is, I believe, the same. So if you can figure that out, that's probably where it went. But um, we don't need to send it to that location. And instead, we're going to send it to my, um, my um, folder I have set up for this thing. And we're going to save over this. Or, well, actually... This is the wrong thing. I name this render. Now this is where it will render, and the final things will are the final things are set up. So um, 
that should be good enough for this, but you need to set this to a video. If you if you render it as is, it will be a single PNG image that's not very good for anyone. So set it to um set it to a video codec or um or um type that you prefer. Um I prefer H.264 and then you go down to encoding. Now, this is important for um people who want to render 1080p videos. Um I believe the bitrate, the recommended bitrate is 160,000 and um minimum and maximum. That's basically just in terms of how much this can fluctuate. Same thing as the bitrate for minimum and for maximum, I believe it is 200,000. That's generally given me a pretty good um, effect. Um, if you want to render um, lower quality videos, 720p or 480p, whatever, um, anything lower, you're probably going to want to look up the bit rates for those. Um, and you're probably going to be able to avoid wasting space and whatnot. Um, as for the rest of this, um, I wouldn't mess too much with it, except for the audio codec. This is important if you want audio in your video, you need to turn this on. You can set this to AAC, FLAC, or probably most of you know this, MP3. And that will allow, um, allow audio in your video. So now that we're done here on the side pane, we need to focus on the, um, on the video editing, which you cannot really do from here but they um, gave us a nice preset for it, um, video editing. Now, if you've used video editing software before, this probably looks um, familiar to you. So um, we have basically, um, I'll explain this in a minute, but we have the, the uh, test footage um, that, that basically live renders, and you can preview your footage here, um, and you have the layers that you set up uh, your footages in, your, your, your your um your yeah basically your layers you except with blender it works on frames instead of time so it's good to know your frame rate here um if you have a narration you can throw it in here and see how many frames it'll line up to and you can try and line up line up your um, animation based on that i will get more into the details of that in future videos but um, in the meantime, uh, let's focus on some of, the, some of the very basics of the Blender layout here. Um, down here, this limits, or this this tells where the animation starts and or the what what your rendering starts and ends. So this is uh, I forget what they call them in like Adobe Premiere or um, Sony Vegas, but that's that's basically the the render region. Um, this is where your playhead is currently. So if you set it up, you can see that it scrolls across. So um, currently we're going to set that to zero because we don't need it to go anywhere. Um, the end is set to 250, which I would rather have at 240, which is 10 seconds of footage. So that'll be 10 seconds of footage there because um, 24 frames per second times 10, 240. So um, that's basically that, that's basically all you need to know about down here for now. Um, there's the, obviously the pay, play, the player head, the playhead controls, you know, things like that. Um, now we're going to, now I'm going to explain this, um, Blender does not have a resource manager inside of it or built into it. I mean, you can set it up, I believe with, um, with file browser, but it doesn't work the same as a, tr as your traditional, um, as your traditional layout or your traditional um, traditional software. So um, to demonstrate this, how you would do this normally is, let's say you go into, um, eh, I got some random stuff here, ha, huh, okay. So um, for instance, here's the little intro jingle, and now that it's been dragged in, notice it has no resource so library, so this is, this is my point. Um, Blender edits the resources and like it loads the resources and then edits them based on the based on what you've done to them. So it's not gonna add backups or whatever to the resources you've already you've already used. So um, for instance, we have our audio here. It's only gonna do to the audio what I tell it to do in Blender. It's not gonna modify it outside of it. So um, with but the cool thing about Blender is you have full range two dimensional editing, so you can have audio above video, 
or intermingled with various tracks of video. It really doesn't matter where it ends up being. So um, that's generally how you would load in resources from the side. Now to give you an example of how this player head works, you would add in you can add in a slug here, which I've created. It's just a um, 1080p video or 1080p um, image of white, basically. I know you can generate this, but I like having the image personally. So um, you can basically see what this is. This is the preview window. So there's your white slug. Um, Another basic thing here is if you drag in another thing on top of it, another video layer or image layer, and you go over to it, you're going to notice that you've got white slug, white slug, and then you've got your thing, which is um, which has expanded over the um, over the image, which it obviously shouldn't be doing. To um, to mend that, because Blender will will stretch your resources, um, or at least your visual resources, to match the video quality. To fix that. Go over down here to um, image offset. Yes. Now, um, if you have a problem, or you'll you'll notice a problem. We go from white, and then we have our image, and then it's just black around it. Um, what's happening here is the blend mode is set to cross instead of um, alpha over. Now that basically just says it's an alpha layer, an alpha layer over the image below. So that is generally. Um, what you would want to do if you want to add a layer over top of another layer. You can play around with the blend modes and get some pretty weird effects, but for now I think that it will probably be the most used of the modes. I usually set everything to alpha over even the very bottom, just to make sure that everything is visible. Now um, another thing to note about Blender that's a little bit um, strange is if you're going to edit your where your image um, ends up being, or, or if you're going to edit like like the transformation, you can initially edit it down here on the offset, which there's nothing wrong with this, but it's limited, and um, you'll notice some weird clipping issues. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add an effect strip and a transform. If you're going to modify where this image goes, and you'll notice, again, this um, this has gone black, if you'll notice again that, um, there, well, here. so if you notice um, it's gone black again, that's because the um, the the strip here has been set to replace in its blend mode, so it's replacing everything below it. Again, just set it to alpha over to fix that problem. So um, I prefer to name my transform like my transformations to keep them straight, basically, just to know where they are and what they refer to because they are separate, as you can see from the um, initial um, image. So. So that's basically um, how I'd keep that straight. Um, again, this works just like anything else. You've got the opacity, but um, you'll notice a problem, and I can probably more clearly demonstrate this with the um, with the moving than the opacity because if you can see here, the opacity is not affecting the avatar right now. So um, to fix that in a minute here, let me show you. Uh, what's happening here is that there are that it's keeping the original image and adding a new transformation image. So to fix that, it's a little counterintuitive, but um, go back down to the resource and set the opacity to zero. It will keep the opacity on the transformation at a at a full one percent or one hundred percent, and um, you'll be able to see just the transformation. Now you can do whatever you want with it. You can scale it or do whatever. You can even rotate it. Which is pretty sweet, but um, yeah, that's that's about it for um, for the video editing in Blender basic setup. Um, comment if you have any questions, and um, this is Dustmite. I hope to see you in my next video.